Hello everyone. I am Tanvir Sharma, working as an assistant professor at IMT College of Law, Greater Noida. And the topic of my presentation is an introduction to soft skills. So talking about what is soft skills. Once William Butler said, think like a wise man, but communicate in the language of people. So that means whenever you wish to communicate in an effective manner, you should be communicating in the language of people. That means having knowledge is not enough. We need to communicate it to others effectively. So soft skills are also called non-technical skills. And these are the social skills, which are those personal values and interpersonal skills that determine a person's ability to work well with others in a project team. Soft skills are needed to deal with external world and to work in a collaborative manner with one's colleagues. These skills include effective communication, leadership, and teamwork skills, demonstrating problem-solving abilities, initiative and motivational skills, displaying honesty and strong work ethics. So if we do talk about soft skills, that means there should be some abilities in you. Like you must be having confidence, you must be well in conversating with others, you must be having some leadership qualities and uh, know how to solve the problems. And also there should be some work ethics in you. Now, talking about types of soft skills. There are various components that comprise soft skills. Some are inborn such as confidence, friendliness, and whether or not someone has a sociable nature or not, while others are skills that can be taught or improved upon. Those skills can be developed such as the communication skill, organizational and social graces. A different set of social or uh, soft skills is required for a specific type of nature of work for our purpose. These may include the following, that is communication skills, listening skills, presentation skills, interpersonal skills, team skills, leadership skills, adequate, cross-cultural skills, and language skills. Now talking about the top 10 soft skills, first one is communication. So the person should know how effectively he or she can communicate to the others. Then comes to the second point that is self-motivation. Third one is leadership. Fourth one is responsibility. Fifth one is teamwork. Sixth one is problem solving. Sixth one uh, that was problem solving and the another one was decisiveness. Eighth one ability to work under pressure and time management. Ninth one is flexibility. And the last one, that is the 10th one, is negotiation and conflict resolution. Now, talking about communication skills. The ability to communicate ideas to others effectively is an absolute essential requirement for career building. So the person should be able to know how to communicate with the others in an effective manner. So speaking clearly will allow effective verbal communication with others. How we speak is more influential to the person whom we are communicating with than what we actually say. So we should be careful about our body language and the tone of voice when we are talking. So communication is a two-way process. So therefore, listening is also a crucial point in uh, this. Like listening is more than just hearing what is being said. 
effective listening encourages others to listen to us and respond to what we say. So while we are talking about the communication skills, listening skills are also uh, vital because when you are communicating, it is a two-way process. Like you are hearing some words and trying to understand those words, which is called listening process. And that is the listening skill due to which you are able to respond back uh, to the person. So the ability to present comprehensive written ideas will enable us to put forward documentation of our thoughts and is highly regarded skill. If we write so that uh, misinterpretation must be minimized, we will find that people are far more receptive to our suggestions. So effective communication skills are something everybody needs to possess. Verbal communication skills include a one-to-one -one interaction, presentation or public speaking ability, and good telephonic skills. Then coming towards the written communication, which includes program writing, report writing, letter writing, and email etiquette. That is, if we do talk about important communication skills, that include our active listening, like oh, when you are hearing to the words, you are trying to understand with the help of your mind. You are trying to understand the words of the speaker and then responding back accordingly. So then coming towards writing, that is the another important communication skill. Then speaking is also the important communication skill along with presentation, that means presenting and empathy. Moving towards self-motivation. So self-motivation is in its simplest form is the force that drives you to do things. So it's the drive you have to work towards your goals to put effort into self-development and to achieve personal fulfillment. It's important to note here that self-motivation is generally driven by intrinsic motivation a kind of motivation that comes from sincerely wanting to achieve and desiring the inherent rewards associated with it. Self-motivation can also be driven by extrinsic motivation. The drive to achieve that comes from wanting external rewards like money, power, status, or recognition. Although it is clear that intrinsic motivation is usually a more effective and fulfilling desire. So uh, if we do talk about self-motivation, uh, this means the person is motivated by self that can be intrinsic or extrinsic way. In intrinsic way, the person is uh, internally motivated by uh, desiring some rewards uh, which are inherently associated with it. When it is uh, about extrinsic motivation, that means there are some external rewards which are associated with it, like money and status, etc. Now coming towards leadership, effective leaders apply these skills to interact with and inspire their teams openly and honestly. As you develop in your career, it is important to develop your soft skills so that you can increase your opportunities for advancement into leadership roles. Motivating and inspiring others are key indicators of strong leadership. Like if the person is a leader, he or she will definitely be motivating the other team members to work in a smooth manner. So leading a group or a team of co-workers means motivating them and providing inspiration. Leaders who are passionate and share that passion with their teams have a higher chance of maintaining employee morale, increasing productivity, and improving performance. 
So if a leader is sincerely putting efforts and uh, fulfilling the responsibility, he or she be, uh, will be able to uh, increase the productivity of the whole team by boosting the confidence of others. Now talking about responsibility. Being responsible brings a sense of discipline in an individual. It makes you more confident. Your problem solving skills are enhanced, helps improve your decision making ability. You happen to be more optimistic. You become a role model for your friends, colleagues, uh, children, etc. When you realize your responsibility, it becomes easier to gain the respect of the people and to take a decent place in society. So if the person is able to carry some responsibility, that responsibility makes the person more disciplined, confident, and helps uh, the person to boost his or her confidence in an optimistic manner. So that person can be the role model for the others. Now talking about teamwork, every successful leader knows how to work as a team with their colleagues. Collaborating and sharing ideas, contributing to a common cause, and helping teammates achieve success are common teamwork skills that our effective leadership depends upon. Behind every genius is a team set by Murphy. When people play off each other's skill and knowledge, they can create solutions that are practical and useful. So when we are talking about the teamwork, that means a team can be working smoothly with each other. Uh, if the people are communicating in an effective manner, if the members of the team are sharing ideas with each other and they are trying to work in a collaborative manner. So teamwork enhances personal growth. There may be no I in team, but being part of a team can help you grow by sharing information and essentially cross-training each other. Each individual member of the team can flourish, said by Murphy. You might discover new concepts from colleagues with different experiences. You can also learn from someone else's mistakes, which helps you sidestep your future errors. So you can also learn from the mistake of uh, other team members that can help you to analyze the mistakes and help you to improve by neglecting such kind of areas or the manners in which they committed some mistakes. So that would help you by the experiences of the other members who are your colleagues. So teamwork boosts productivity, getting a back, uh, uh, tap on the, sorry, getting a pat on the back from the boss can boost an employee's motivation, but receiving kudos from a team member may even be more effective. The tiny pulse employee engagement and organizational culture report surveyed more than two lakh employees Participants reported that having the respect of their peers was the number one reason they go the extra mile at work. So if you get the appreciation from your team members, you will be excelling more. As it is well said by someone that appreciation enlightens the one's existence. Now talking about problem solving. Science reinforces the idea that many brains are better than one. We found that groups of size three, four, and five are perform the best individuals, says Dr. Patrick, a researcher at the University at Urbana. We attribute this performance to the ability of people to work together to generate and adopt correct responses, reject erroneous responses, and effectively process information. So 
problem solving uh, solving is both ability as well as a process as an ability problem solving can aid in resolving issues faced in different environments like home school abroad and so the social situations among others as a process problem solving involves a series of steps for finding a solution to questions or concerns that arise throughout the life so uh, the ability of solving problems uh, uh, by the individual will help the person to grow as an individual and also along with that it will help to the institution or organization where that individual is working so that means problem solving is both an ability as well as a process if the person is able to solve the problem that means he or she can uh, be able to uh, solve the situation uh, related problems or any kind of problem in different environments and different situations and if we are talking about problem solving process then that involves various steps which will help to find solutions uh, to the concerns related to the problem. Now, talking about decisiveness, the ability to make decisions is a valuable leadership trait and it demonstrates your capacity to think objectively and weigh different options. In addition, your aptitude to make a quick decision can help establish a strong bond of trust with other employees that can strengthen your company's culture. So decisiveness is a soft skill that helps professionals make important and timely decisions about work-related activities. Managers need to be decisive in order to make quick decisions about hiring, task delegation, employee ideas, or deadline dates. This helps provide a sense of direction and authority to work activities and also helps ensure managers maintain the productivity of their departments. So the decision-making um, activity is very valuable for uh, uh, carrying a smooth functioning of the institute. Now talking about the ability to work under pressure and time management. So uh, this may involve effectively prioritizing tasks. So that means when you have number of tasks in front of you, you may prioritize one or over the another to manage your pressure or the work pressure. Then organizing work, that means you should know how to organize your work systematically to work smoothly. Then coming towards adopting an attitude that allows you to take on new tasks and deadlines. That means your attitude should be in such a manner that you should know how to handle the new tasks and how to meet the deadlines. Dealing with constraints that are often outside of your control. That means when you are uh, when there is any situation which is not in your control you must be handling that situation calmly and coolly so that uh, you will be able to handle the work with uh, light pressure or minimal minimal pressure then performing well under pressure that will happen only if you are planning or prioritizing with the help of the various strategies and you are focusing on the present, that means you are not deviating your thoughts here and there, and you are concentrating on the present task. Then if there are like various tasks, you are going to prioritize one over the another. If there is a bigger task, then you must be completing that particular task in a uh, small bits like you are breaking tasks down so that will also help you to achieve the target in a smooth manner then understanding the requirement that means you are prioritizing the task according to the understanding of the requirement then removing distractions like there can be 
much pressure on your mind while you are working. So you must be uh, leaving all the distractions behind to concentrate on your present work. You may also ask for the help from your colleagues if you require. That will not be a big issue. If your colleagues can help you, you can openly ask for it. Then coming towards flexibility. Flexibility at work can help individuals manage unexpected circumstances, improve their satisfaction with their personal and professional lives, and stay employed. So that means person should know how to be flexible in unexpected circumstances and that will definitely help the person in a professional as well as in a personal manner and will help to stay employed. Being flexible allows people to adapt to a new situation, changes and face challenges with ease. This is uh, an important skill for individual in a variety of professional settings. So flexibility is an important skill to master, whether it means having the ability to overcome stress or simply to adjust to changes quickly. Having a high level of flexibility makes it easier for you to live a less stressful and hectic life. While flexibility is important, many people struggle to achieve it for a variety of reasons. Fortunately, improving your flexibility is possible. So that means if the person is flexible, that means he or she will be able to deal with stress in a smooth manner and accept the challenge, uh, whatever comes in front of him or her. Uh, with open arms and uh, then with the help of uh, flexibility people will achieve whatever they desire so that will also help uh, to lesser the any kind of stress on their mind or they are able to adjust into the different situations now talking about negotiation and conflict management like conflict management skills are your abilities to handle conflicts and differences in the workplace these skills help control how conflicts affect you your colleagues and the work environment employers prefer candidates who can resolve disagreements calmly and diplomatically try to resolve them through peaceful discussion managers can create a work environment where conflicts get accepted and managed with these skills using your conflict management abilities you aim to listen to both sides and find a solution that suits all the involved parties by doing so you increase workplace productivity like if there is any kind of conflict between the two parties you are trying to find the middle way out and you are solving the issue uh, with some middle way out as i have earlier said and finding a solution that will satisfy both the parties and that will also help to increase the productivity of the workplace. Now, talking about how to develop soft skills, like developing soft skills needs practice. These are acquired and experienced on the spot. Soft skills cannot be acquired by just reading textbooks. The soft skills we gain equip us to excel in our academic and professional life and in our personal life. It is a continuous learning process. So development of uh, soft skills has two parts. One part involves developing attitudes and attributes and the other part involves fine-tuning communication skills to express attitudes, ideas and thoughts. Perfect integration of ideas and attitudes with appropriate communication skills in oral, written, and non-verbal areas is necessary for successful work. Attitudes and skills are integral to soft skills. 
each one influences and complements the other. Like if uh, there is the requirement of hard skill in which you know the computer, you do have uh, your subject knowledge and um, to uh, smoothly stay in the system for the longer time period, you should also be having soft skill with yourself. So that means we should be uh, talking about the integral uh, part of attitude along with the uh, skills such as soft skill. So that means each one influences and complements the other with the help of soft skill. Now talking about hard skills versus soft skills. As I have earlier told that hard skills are those technical procedures or tools related to our field. Examples include a uh, workplace productivity tools, computer protocols. These skills are typically easy to observe, quantify, and measure. By contrast, soft skills are typically hard to observe, quantify, and measure. So soft skills complement hard skills, which are technical requirements. Soft skills are as vital, if not more important, than traditional hard skills at our work. So now I'm talking about the importance of soft skills. They indicate longevity. Like when hiring for a position, many employers look for signs that a candidate may stay with their company for a longer time period. Your potential longevity is important to employers because they will likely spend fewer resources on hiring a replacement. Then soft skills like conflict resolution, commitment, and motivation can make you a long-term asset to employers. Your work ethic and professionalism are other important indicator of longevity for a job, which can help you distinguish yourself from other candidates for a position. Uh, these skills also help measure teamwork. If you're applying for a position as a part of team, the hiring manager may evaluate your application partly based on how well you can work within a group. Employers use soft skills to measure your teamwork and communication abilities. During an interview, you may discuss how you handle conflict within a group setting or between two employees especially if you are applying for manager role. Being able to manage conflict requires the ability to place yourself in the individual's shoes and understand both sides in an unbiased way. Demonstrating your teamwork skills shows employers you can be an asset to others in the workplace. To appeal to an employer's goals of finding a great team member, list soft skills like flexibility and active listening on your resume. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, these skills help maintain relationships. Soft skills not only support your workplace relationship, but also determine your success in working with clients and business partners. Employers seek employees they can trust to represent the company in a professional and friendly way. So this can also help your career growth potential by maintaining relationships in your organization. If people generally are able to get along with you, you may be more likely to earn a raise because management knows you you can work well with others. So soft skills help employers differentiate between candidates who are qualified for a job and candidates who can exceed expectations by putting effort into their professional relationships. Some skills such as good customer service can be valuable in many positions, regardless of the company or industry. So. Your skills like soft skills are helping you to build your professional relationships also. They can also help you to grow your network. Like these are the critical uh, for creating and growing your network and making professional contacts in the workplace. Professionals with 
excellent soft skills have a crucial attitude that allows them to pursue professional leads and develop industry knowledge quickly. Employees rely on people with a strong professional network to help them make business connections, provide professional development, and even make hiring decisions. Your employer may value your opinions and ideas more highly if your network is valuable to a company. They can facilitate growth like most soft skills contribute to your ability to use your existing skills well and develop and grow those skills consistently over time. Accepting and implementing constructive feedback is a valuable soft a uh, skill that can help you improve your productivity and quality of work. So feedbacks are always vital in that context. Employers also want to hire people who consistently look for ways to take the initiative to improve their skill set. Use your soft skills to be self-sufficient and reflective in your work and you can quickly become an outstanding employee. These skills can also help you gain more confidence, like your uh, uh, skills can help you navigate workplace issues with confidence. Your confidence can help you influence others and persuade them of your perspective in professional situations. It can help or allow you to advocate for yourself and communicate new ideas and suggestions clearly. So you must be uh, confident to express your ideas effectively, which helps others to understand your vision. During a job interview, your confidence may convince an employer to choose you over the another applicant. So using soft skills to build your confidence can help you to integrate into a new workplace environment and establish yourself as an essential team member they help establish your reputation. So these are the skills to help you build your professional re uh, reputation. These skills can help you to contribute to your employer's reputation also. How you interact with clients and business partners can influence how people perceive your company, impacting their decision to work with the business. Your soft skills can determine the success of your Social interactions, the timeliness of your work and your ability to mediate conflicts on behalf of your employer to build a great reputation. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening. Have a good day.